stream go live. Okay, just getting set up here. Let me see if it refreshes. Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to go over a few things. Uh, I'm going to go over a strategy that higher level players use, um, which involves um, refreshing their buffs, utilizing the hidden village. We're going to be going over the altar of the goddess and donations. To the altar of goddess altar of the goddess um, i'm going to be going over my new pet setup that i have um, that y'all haven't seen yet and we're going to go do some farming so um, and this is my character this is again my master breeder this is my main this is the deco gear that i have for it um, this is the rudolph set which when put on males looks like this when put on a female character looks um, kind of like a brown kind of like dough almost um, I have the deco shield and the Christmas uh, deco one hand staff. Um, I have some deco wings and I have this special deco cloak. Um, this game has gone through many publishers. It's constantly like bought and sold off to other people. When um, Bora took over, they had an event where you could get tokens through farming. And then when you exchange them to an NPC, you were given a random item. And this deco cloak was one of the many items that you could get that had one of the lowest chances of you being able to get it. And I was able to save up a mass of tokens and turn them in, and I was able to get one of these. Um, the deco cloaks give you barely any stats at all, a little bit of MP and HP, um, but they're really just for decorative looks. But I think it actually goes pretty well um, with this setup. Anyway, <coughs> into the game we go. And wait for it to load us in. Takes just a moment. Okay, y'all will see that I now have um, no crystal golem. Instead, I have this uh, pixie. I'll go over that in just a minute. So right now, um, y'all will see that I have all these buffs on me that expire in about a minute and a half. Now, um, as y'all have seen before, when you have the Hidden Village Pass, you can go to the Hidden Village and you can pay an NPC to give you all of these buffs. These are all the buffs from the different player classes um, that have their own buffs. And the Hidden Village will give you all the buffs, but they're kind of lower level buffs. Like, they're nice buffs, but, you know, compared to actual players that have max level buffs using the skill cards, they're not as good. Now, what you can do is you can pay higher level players that, um, there's only a couple on the server that are, on the server I play on that are really trusted, but they, you pay them a billion rupees and they will, um, log on to all their alts and they will give you all of these buffs, which are way better. But these buffs expire in an hour. So you don't want to be paying a billion rupees every hour for these buffs. So what you do is in the hidden village, as long as you have a pass, you have this, uh, scroll of refresh. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And now you see all my buffs now have another hour on them. The scroll only costs maybe like 10 million rupees. And then I can also use the scroll of pet power. And I can put them onto my pets and give them the same one hour cooldown. As long as I have a hidden village pass, I can go and buy more of these scrolls, which the scrolls are timed for like three to four days. Um, and then I can use them and make sure that my pets and myself um, constantly have these buffs so that means that um, it's like I think it's like 10 bill uh, 10 million for the scroll of refresh and 12.5 million for the scroll of pet power so that means you need to be um, making actively about 25.5 um, mil an hour in order to not lose money on this deal so as long as you're able to use those buffs to go farm higher level areas and make more than 25 and a half million in an hour, then you're actually making a profit, which we're gonna go farming here in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna explain uh, real quick the altar of the goddess, which is right here. There's one in every single town. Um, right now we are in a town called Horizon, 
Um, this one's in an easily accessible spot, so I like to come to this one. But they're in every town. And um, this has a few uh, uses. Now, we're going to talk about the PK system, uh, the PvP system for the PvP servers. If we open our character stats and go to additional information, we have our tendency, our morality. As long as it's blue, that means that it is positive. If it is red, that means that it is negative. And if it is white and you're at zero, then that means that it is neither one nor the other. When you kill people through PvP, you get negative morality. When you get negative morality, your name um, goes red, and when that happens, anyone has the ability to kill you. And if you kill someone with a red name, you do not gain immorality. Furthermore, when you get immorality, you get a debuff called Wrath that will give you minuses to all of your stats. And if you uh, get max level Wrath, then you'll get like minus 90% to every single one of your stats, and it will last um, like 12 hours or something like that. So in order to get rid of your immorality, you either have to use a cash shop item called Immorality Soap, which will get rid of 500 immorality points for every individual one. Um, you will still have to wait out the buff. You cannot get rid of, uh, I mean, the debuff, the wrath. You cannot just get rid of it, even if you get rid of your red name. But at least once you no longer have the red name, um, by getting rid of your immorality points, people can't target you for uh, PK or for PvP unless they turn on PK mode, which means that they would get the immorality points. Now, you see that my uh, tendency is positive 29,450. Now, if you already have positive tendency and you kill someone, your immorality points subtract from that number. As long as that number doesn't go below zero, you don't get immorality and you will not get wrath. Therefore, stacking up positive morality as much as you can before going and killing people is a good idea because it will prevent you from ever having to deal with the wrath debuff. Oh, hello. How are you? Just saw that I had a little high in there. <laughs> um, but as I was saying, um, so the altar of the goddess is one way that you are able to get, well, it's actually the only way that you're able to stack up this um, positive morality. So when we go ahead and double click on it, uh, we have the ability to donate items, donate money, or to get a gift of the goddess. Now, basically, um, once you store up enough points, instead of using them for PK, what you can do is Gift of the Goddess, and you can choose to, for 1,000 points, I could get this box, for 5,000 points, this box, for 10,000 points, this box, and for 30,000 points, this box. Um, each of the boxes has a chance to have one of different items in it. Um, what the game basically does is it assigns a rupee value to every single item that you put in it. Meaning if you were to go sell it at an NPC, you would get rupees. Instead, you uh, don't donate those items and the amount of those rupees converts into the morality points. You can also just donate flat rupees um, if you want money to just buy the morality points. Um, the gifts can give you uh, skill cards, they can give you empty creature cards, they can give you a box that has a random amount of rupees in it um, and they can also on the higher tiers give you boxes that might have um, deco items such as wings in them that you can sell for a good bit of money. Low chance of that happening. There are people who will stack up all their points and buy all these boxes to try and turn a profit but mostly it's just used for the uh, PK system. Um, if you look up the Repels wiki, it goes over the Altar of the Goddess. It shows you what all the different rewards and tiers are. Honestly, I don't think it's really worth using to try and make money off of. I think you're better off selling the stuff to the NPC and getting the guaranteed rupees. But I'm doing it so that whenever I need to PK people or I want to PK people or anything like that, since we are on a PvP server, um, I'm not going to get that Raft debuff. Because I had that happen to me recently. I had to kill someone... Um, because they basically were botting, which means that they weren't even at their computer. They had a script, and it was just constantly killing monsters over and over in an area, and it was killing a quest monster that I needed for a quest, so I had to kill the bot so that I could kill the quest monster. And since I didn't have anything donated, I got 12-hour debuff of Wrath, so that's 12 hours. I had to just stay logged in continuously because the Wrath debuff only ticks down while you're logged, at, uh, while you're logged in. It doesn't go while you're logged out. 
So I had to just AFK overnight for 12 hours to get rid of that debuff, and I had to buy a bunch of those immorality soaps to get rid of all my uh, immorality, and that cost me money, and that wasn't fun. So I have a bunch of useless, low-level junk that I've found um, while just farming, and that's the kind of stuff that you want to donate. This stuff isn't really worth that much money, um, so it's good for just boosting our um, morality points. So I'm currently at 29,450. Let's go ahead and donate, and now I'm at 29,504 um, morality. And when you kill people, um, based on the level difference, So where you will farm and win. Okay, one second and I'll get to your question. Let me finish this slot that I'm already on. Um, so based on level difference, if I'm really high level and they're really low level, I'll get a ton of immorality. If we're basically the same level, I'll only get a little bit. So killing people that are um, l leveled under than you is going to um, give you immorality faster. Now back to your question. So where you will farm and win. Well, um, where you farm in the game depends on your level. Typically, you're going to go and farm in a dungeon that is going to be just a little higher level than you. The first dungeon in the game runs from level 20 to like level 40. So um, around like level 20, you can go in there and start killing dungeon monsters and level up until you get to be about level 40, level 45 if you really want. Then you go to the second dungeon, which runs about like level 50, level 60. Um, by the time you're in the third dungeon, you're around like level 80s, 70s to like 80s, uh, early 90s, I think. Um, there's also uh, quests that you do in the game that will massively level you up um, so that you're able to effectively skip some of the dungeons. That goes into the witch quest. Um, I'll have to do other videos on the witch quest because like it's its own entire thing. But um, if you aren't strong enough to be able to farm in a dungeon by yourself, either get a duo partner if that's not possible then you can always go farm out in the fields. Um, you're gonna find that there's areas um, that have what are called like the boss uh, the boss monsters that are going to be basically like miniature bosses. They're like field bosses so that they will give more EXP, they'll be harder to kill, and they'll give more drops compared to the regular field monsters, but they'll still be way easier to kill than any of the uh, dungeon monsters. So those are some good areas to go farming, but typically um, you're gonna want to go into a dungeon that's just a little bit higher level than you, and you're going to want to go farm in there until you reach up to that level. Um, these are all low-level stuff. These were actually um, on one of my alternate characters um, farming in the first dungeon, and um, I'm going to be farming in a dungeon later um, in just a little bit, which is a higher-level dungeon. Recently I had to uh, PK another bot that was out um, preventing some people from being able to farm and um, I went through like 30,000 immorality points um, by killing that one bot because it was so much lower level than me, um, which is why I'm doing this. Um, when you're trying to farm in dungeons, especially at higher levels, they do become PK fests. People will come up while you're trying to farm and kill you and take your spot. They'll um, be like, oh, this person's farming, they're obviously a bot, and they'll kill you and try to justify themselves, but, <laughs> so yeah, I definitely want to stack up my morality, so if I need to kill anyone to defend my farming spot, defend myself, that I will not get the raft debuff, that will stop me from being able to farm for a while, and will set me back. Uh, I do have uh, new sea lights gear that I have on myself, and I also have some new sea lights gear on my pets. Uh, now I'm not going to donate any of that to the uh, altar, though. But yeah, um, all you really do for new sea lights gear is once you get high enough level to do parallel world, um, I believe it's like minimum level like 170 or something. You get the parallel world gear that just uh, assorted space gear, which there's four um, categories of it. Correct, I play on a PvP server. The only difference between the PvP server and the PvE server is that you can kill people on a PvP server.
It's the same game. It's just in PVE. You don't have uh, PK mode to be able to PK uh, to be able to kill people. Which um, there are certain areas in the game which has PK turned off. Mostly, it's going to be in towns, um, but there's going to be some like random places um, where you aren't able to turn PK mode on to kill people. Um, like when you're doing the witch quest for the master trials and you're having to go on the platforms and do all that stuff with that witch quest um you uh later on in the game you won't be able to pk in there um so that's another popular spot for bots to go in and farm and it annoys some people but um pk definitely serves a good purpose although it does suck when you're on the receiving end especially um when it's just people who are bored pking lower levels Uh, for anyone who's interested, by the way, I play on Reviac. It is a PvP server um, for the uh, North American server, but it's also the most populated of the four servers. Oh yeah, you'll also notice when I'm donating that some items are grayed out. That means that you can't donate them. Um, yes, I do. I do believe that when you get PvP, actually, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so your gear will have durability on it, and when you're killed by a uh, monster, your gear will lose durability. Um, I think it loses durability um, in uh, PvP, but I'm not entirely sure. I know that it used to, but honestly, I've been PK'd a couple of times. Um, here recently, and I don't think that the durability on my gears have gone down when I got PK'd. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. But as long as you um, actively make sure to uh, heal up your um, armors, your gears, you, then you don't really need to worry about them breaking. Can you, I see the market before the farm? You mean the flea market? Like what? what is it that you want me to show you? that I'm going to need later. Yeah, we can go back to the flea market. So, um, I've shown you all the flea market in at least one other previous video, probably more. I like to, I like to spend a lot of time in the flea market, actually. Um, flea market, you're always going to have Oh, you just want to see how active the flea market is. I got you. Um, well, this is one side of the flea market where the um, auction broker and where the um, lack trader are tend to be where everyone tends to gather up. Um, every now and then you'll have some like random people on this other side and also around this like middle area. Um, <coughs> Sometimes there will be some people over here on the walkway. Um, it also depends on what time of the day you play because this uh, is based on UTC, but I play in Central Time. So around 5 o'clock my time is around like midnight, 1 a.m. Um, UTC time. So when I play earlier in the day versus when I play later at night for myself, you'll have different people on. Sometimes there will be more people than this in the uh, flea market. Sometimes there will be less people than this in the flea market. Um, 
which is also kind of nice because you can be shouting in chat that you want to buy something and you can have like literally no one responding but you just wait like five or six hours because of the time difference you get back on later that day and shout and you have a bunch of people trying to sell whatever it is you want um or you can go into the auction house and you notice that the auction house has new stuff in it every day from you sleeping overnight because of that time difference Yeah, uh, Reviac is the most populated server out of the four servers for the um, North American uh, servers. Um, Unicorn, I mean, honestly, all the servers are more dead, um, but yeah. Unfortunately, when they made the two new servers that are marked new servers, um, some people left the old servers to join the new servers, but not everyone left. So it's like a small portion of the larger player base went to those servers, which is why they're basically dead. So yeah, I definitely recommend um, playing on Reviac if you're going to join the game. Even if you already play on a different server, I would say it's worth it to definitely um, play on this server. So real quick, um, I also want to go over my new pet setup before we go farming and doing anything. Now, if y'all remember the last time that um, I was playing, I was telling y'all about how you want to use the Ethereal Pixie with the Crystal Golem, and instead of this yellow Wind Pixie, I had a Crystal Golem um, as my secondary pet, and the Crystal Golem was a tank. Now, I have decided um, to do something that goes against the meta, and I've decided to use a Wind Pixie as my secondary pet. Um, the Wind Pixie specializes in physical damage. And it specializes in DPS and also evasion. So although the, uh, tank, the uh, Wind Pixie is going to be squishy, it's not necessarily a tank. It has so much evasion that you can actually put on there that it can dodge most attacks, meaning that it can effectively be an evasion tank. You can let monsters try to aggro on it, and it will dodge most of their attacks, so it won't take too much damage. When it does start to take those attacks, the Ethereal Pixie has a ton of healing. You can heal the Wind Pixie back up. But the Wind Pixie has so much freaking DPS and damage, it's just, it's not even funny. It can kill stuff pretty quick. Way better than the Crystal Golem could. Um, I can tell you from the Discord, everyone wants the servers to combine, and the official answer is that they are not going to combine the servers. Basically what happened is they spent their time and resources and money, all that good fun stuff, to make two new servers, and the servers have failed horribly. Everyone hates them and wants them to combine the servers back to one PvE and one PvP for better server balance. And the official answer is, well, we've already made our decision, we did this, and if we reverse our decision, then it's like we admitted defeat, and like it was a bad decision, so we're just going to keep it as it is and not do anything. Um, there are constantly people complaining from every server that they want the server merges. Um, the mods of the Discord um, have been suggesting it to the devs and to the people responsible for that over and over and over and over. And the devs um, say there are no current plans for any time in the near future for any kind of server merges, unfortunately. Um, much to the dismay of every single person who plays this game. Unfortunately, um, despite the fact that the game actually has some of the best mechanics out of any MMO I've played, and I really love it, and a lot of people really love it, the developers of the game honestly are kind of uh, sacks of crap that don't really care about their community, and that's kind of the sad truth. Um, it's not a good sign, but honestly, I, I've tried playing other MMOs, I just can't stand them. I keep coming back to this one because I love the gameplay, even if the people in charge of the game don't care about their player base. Um, that being said, the actual mods and the people that run the Discord, um, they're very good people. Um, they care very much about customer service and customer support. Um, shout out if any of them ever watch any of my videos that they're doing a great job. But unfortunately, they don't get the final say-so in a lot of stuff. They can voice their opinions, but they're not the ones that actively make all the decisions, unfortunately. Uh, 
Um, but back to the pixies. Um, so basically, um, the meta thing to do is to have your uh, pixie supercharge your uh, tank so that your tank does the damage over time and can tank anything and kills everything using the damage over time. Um, this strategy basically um, revolves around nothing being able to hit your wind pixie, being able to heal your wind pixie when something does hit it, and being able to kill stuff so fast it doesn't get off that many attacks to begin with anyway. Um, this wind pixie that I have named Spitfire, this yellow one, this thing is like a flying machine gun. Um, Y'all are going to see it in an action, and it is pretty crazy. Um, and what's also really nice is that the wind pixie um, has a passive, which, uh, no, wind pixie, not ethereal. Here we go. Skills, passives, where did it go? Yeah, look at this. So... Wind Pixie uses both Intelligence for um, its magic damage and Strength for its regular DPS, its regular hits. There is a passive that um, it increases Strength by 110% of its Intelligence. So you take its Intelligence score, 110% of that gets added to its Strength score. Um, and your Ethereal Pixie gives both strength and intelligence to the secondary pet so this pet gives intelligence and strength to this pet based on its max hp and max mp so by increasing its max mp max hp by increasing their intelligence and strength and critical power from being a master breeder and from this one being able to further increase its strength by its um intelligence we're basically using the master breeder passives on top of using the uh, ethereal pixie to supercharge this wind pixie so that it is the star of the show that um wreaks absolute havoc and we're gonna go see that in action here shortly but that is the idea that is my new setup i'm using two pixies instead of the crystal golem the crystal golem is nice it's meta it's cheaper with the setup for the crystal golem but the DPS just wasn't there, and I needed something better. And although many people would argue that this strategy only works um, at lower high levels, like around like level 180, level 190, once you get to the highest high levels, like around after like level 200 to 10, that you're going to need a uh, crystal golem, you're going to need a tank, that this may not work as great. Um, for my purposes, it's working pretty well. But I still have my crystal golem. I haven't sold him off just in case I need him in the future um i need to go back to the hidden village so i'm gonna double click my pass and i can just instantly transfer to the hidden village y'all see i have one scroll of refresh and one scroll of pet power left and um oh yeah both of my pixies are stage five um this one is level 201 stage five this one is level 190 um stage five And um, with the strategy of refreshing buffs, when you die, let's say that someone kills you or a monster kills you, you lose all of your buffs, right? Um, in order to avoid losing all your buffs, if you have this, the Godmother Fairy Bottle, when you die, if it's in your inventory, it'll allow you the option to respawn where you are. It will give you 100% of any lost experience back if a monster killed you. And it will also give you back all the buffs that you lost. So by making sure that we always have the GMFB in our inventory and that we always have multiple um, refresh scrolls, I can make sure that that one billion I spent on all of my buffs never goes away. So I'm going to go to the scroll merchant. And I only have 30 million rupees on me. Um, I'm just going to buy one scroll of refresh. I have a lot more rupees in my uh, in my warehouse. I like to keep my inventory. I like to keep my rupees in my warehouse for storage instead of keeping them on my character so that I am less inclined to spend all of them on random stupid crap that I don't need. <laughs> and it also helps me gauge when I'm farming how much money I'm making for my farm. So it serves a couple of points. Okay, I have no lack. Good. I'm going to go ahead and use the wind potion so that I can move faster. And we are now going to go farming, and y'all are going to see these two things in action. And I want to go ahead and give them both of my special master breeder buffs that will increase all of their stats.
Good. Okay. So we are going to go to a dungeon called Remains of the Ancients, which is around like a level 170 to 190 dungeon. And I'm going to be going to the level 190 area, the highest level area of it, and farming a special spot that I like to go to. I think it's the best farming spot in there. Um, it's not one of the most contested areas, but there are definitely people who will come in there sometime and try to contest that uh, spot from you. By the way, in order to be able to enter the Remains of the Ancients, you actually have to um, pass a quest line, I believe, going through the Red Spider Circus. Um, and then in order to unlock Deviledom, um, which is the next, um, it's like the level 200 dungeon, um, you have to um, do a quest line from here, I believe. It's been years since I've last done these quests and unlocked all this stuff on this main. Um, I'll play religiously for like four or five months and then I won't play for like a year or two and I'll come back and I'll have to relearn what's changed in that time. But yeah, here we are. I know I can see my current loot pet. Um, I used to like to collect loot pets. I got rid of most of them. I only have a couple left now. Um, this is the uh, little elf I think I showed it to y'all last time. Um, I'm actually currently trying to get another loot pet that is like a little miniature horse that will follow you around and pick up your loot. Um, it's one of the older ones, so they don't sell it in the cash shop anymore. I'm having to try and find someone who already has it in order to be able to buy it. But um, I like that little horse. It's probably one of my favorite ones. Random little tidbit. Random little tidbit. Oh yeah, also those uh, snowmen that you see in here. Um, they are basically like reskins of the Mystic Koala. I know I've mentioned both of them in a previous video. So you can come in here and you can tame the snowmen. They are T6 pets. They're the uh, yellow ones, like the uh, special or unique, I think is what they're called. And they have like all the same abilities um, and belt passives of the uh, Mystic Koala. Yeah, I'm just running through all these monsters are attacking me and I'm just like, I don't care. These dirty peasants think that they can touch me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see that? You see that? Crystal Golem couldn't kill stuff that fast. Had to wait for its passive to start, you know, taking down. Okay, I do not see anyone else in here, so I think that means that we have this place to ourselves. Now, let's, uh, let's watch how this works. Just, you see this thing? Do you see this thing in action? It is a freaking machine gun. It just, it has no chill at all. It starts attacking faster than my ethereal pixie can even start attacking. And when it starts going, it's just chipping down at that health like there is no tomorrow. It's like, even without its abilities, it is uh, pretty terrifying. But then once it does start using its abilities, um, it actually has like quite a few nukes. Um, my Aethral Pixies nukes, I keep up here. I don't keep them activated so that I can use them whenever I want to. Um, the Wind Pixie, I'm just letting it use its nukes as it wants. Um, it, <laughs> it actually just used it right as I was talking about it. It killed those three monsters um, simultaneously in just an instant. Um, yeah. Which it's actually funny because um, one of the strategies of how you uh, kill monsters faster and um, get a lot of loot better is that you train mobs, you get them all in an area, and then you use an AoE nuke, and that's been like the best way for like the longest time to do it. Um, however, with the Wind Pixie, your basic DPS is so fast that you can just attack monsters one by one and kill them faster than you can when you actually have to train them and get them to all run around after you and then put them in position so that they're all ready um, to be nuked and killed so you can kill like 50, 60, however many monsters at the same time in an instant. <laughs> now, 
Now, um, I will say that um, I do have some decent gear for both of my Pixies. Uh, don't get me wrong, I do not have the best of the best gear. Um, but it's also not like the worst of the worst gear. I'm just using pretty okay gears. So if I were to go ahead and I were to min-max and I were to get like the best of the best full gears for my pets, um, I would be making this kill speed uh, look incredibly slow. Um, I'd like some basic plus 10 armor. I don't even have any soul stones on that. Oh no, the monsters are going to start attacking me while I'm AFK I'm trying to show y'all what kind of accessories I have. Not cool. Now I will say that when farming here in um, Rota, you're not going to get as much variation in the items that you get as you will in other dungeons and other places. So if you care about the drops, that can be one um, like turn off, like one setback. But um, the amount of pure rupees, this pure gold that you get over items is higher than other places. Meaning that if you farm in here for an hour, the amount of just flat out money you get is going to be higher than if you try to go farm like an Ondura on Kaya Lake or if you try to go farm in Devildom and um, do stuff like that. You're getting just better pure ruby value. Now on top of that, you also can find um, what's called like uh, ancient dust or something like that. Like the, yeah, the ancient dust, which is this black dust right here. Um, every 100 dust that you get, you can combine and turn it into like one um, bar of steel. And once you level up your weapon to, I think it's like level 10, um, you need to start using the uh, steel in order to keep leveling up your weapons and your armors further up until like level 40. And that's not including the enchantment level. So you could have like level 40 plus 25 gears. Um, of course, each level is going to increase its durability and its damage, its defense, its basic stats, um, stuff like that. So um, you can sell those uh, steel bars um, to people. Um, prices keep changing. I used to sell them for maybe about like 10 to 15 mil per bar. So if you save up a bunch of those bars and sell them, you can make a, much, a bunch of money off that. But if you're farming in here and you just use it for yourself, then you can also save a bunch of money by just farming it all yourself instead of paying hundreds of millions or even billions for um, this stuff to level up your weapons. Um, you know what? Actually, I have not farmed in here for one hour consistently before. Typically, by a time that I've done about a good 20 to 30 minutes, either I have other people trying to take this spot from me, or typically I just honestly, I get really bored of just grinding and I leave, um, or something comes up and I have other stuff I have to do. Um, unless I'm in a dungeon party and I'm trying to actively like P-level, I typically don't spend like a good hour farming. Um, but, um, we'll just see how long I stay in here for. I'll probably stay here and try to farm. I want to farm for quite a while, so we'll be able to, uh, look and see. But, um, you do get a bunch of, uh, concentrated powers in here, which is really nice. Uh, you get, um, I think typically when I check, I have, um, after like 20 to 30 minutes, maybe like a couple thousand concentrated powers instead of essences of powers which multiply that by 10 and that would be how many essence of powers you have, like 25, 30,000, something like that. Um, I also really like that they drop a bunch of these wind potion level threes because um, it takes a lot of these uh, level three wind potions to be able to make these level five wind potions. So um, I used to have to farm cube dungeon over and over and over because that had one of the best drop rates for the wind potions, but they drop pretty often in here um, so that I'm not always on my last wind potion and having a uh, low movement speed. So in one hour of farming, uh, to answer your question, you were asking about extreme powers, not essences of powers. Um, probably a couple hundred, a uh, few hundred. But to be fair, that is heavily influenced by your luck stat, which I don't have a full luck set. If I really, really wanted to, I could increase my luck and I could actually make more money while farming in here. 
but the only um, basically downside to that is all of my gear is meant to make my pet stronger so that they have um, better stats. They will kill stuff faster. They'll have more uh, like life to them. They won't die as fast. If I start prioritizing luck over that, my pets will start killing stuff slower. Um, they might, you know, start taking more hits. They'll die more often. So um, that's why I really haven't <coughs> concentrated on upping my luck. I know that when you're farming, um, it's like the best thing you can do is get as much luck as you can but I've just gone for pure stats so that I can kill stuff faster and get more kills um, to make more drops and more money that way over making each uh, monster I kill drop um, statistically slightly more because luck is... Um, like it's nice, but unless you have tons and tons of it, an extra, like, extra hundred here, extra couple hundred there isn't really going to make any kind of noticeable difference. You would need like an extra like thousand luck for it to really make any kind of difference. Um, no, <laughs> I I uh, do not want to say how much I have used the cash shop in this game. Um, it's not even funny. Um, now back when I first started playing, um, and I actually had a group of friends that I played with, um, I had no need to use the cash shop because um, when you're in a group of people the game becomes a lot easier to be able to play, but unfortunately that was many, many, many years ago that my friends used to play this game, and since I have been a solo player. And when you are having to uh, play solo and you don't have a group of people to play with, you have to be able to basically output all of the damage that they would have done. You have to be able to tank all the damage they would have tanked. You have to, uh, you know, effectively be able to play the game for multiple people by yourself. Now, in order to um, facilitate this, they've made the early game a lot easier than it used to be. So I can easily solo, you know, like you can easily solo as a beginner, um, like the first few dungeons of the game and like most of the first witch quests, aside from like the very last mission of the witch quest and get yourself to like level 90, 100, pretty easy. The mid game, it starts to turn up a little bit in scale. Um, if you're not using the cash shop and you don't have other people with you, then you're going to have um, a little bit rougher of a time. You're going to have to kill um, regular um, like uh, field monsters and stuff like that for a little bit before you can actually get a little bit higher level than the dungeon monsters and go in there and have a little bit better of a chance at high, high levels. If you don't have like the best of the best gear um, and the best of the best pets and everything, um, it's not really that doable. Uh, it's okay. But yeah, what actually really sucks is, so I used to have a group of friends, um, here maybe like a year or two ago when I used to play the game, I made a group of friends online, and um, before I left the game, I actually had no intention of coming back to the game. I thought I was going to go ahead and just quit it for good and move on to other stuff, um, because I had played it for so long I'd gotten tired of it. I gave away, like, everything I had to, um mostly to uh, people in that group. I gave away some stuff to some random people too, um, just because I like to be nice. But um, I gave away all my pets, I gave away all my gears, all of my pet gears, I gave away my money, I gave away um, like anything of any value whatsoever. So when I came back to this game here maybe like five months ago now, give or take, um, I had literally nothing and I was a high level and I'm like, I cannot even go out and farm and try to make any form of money or anything because I have literally nothing and those friends no longer um, play this game and I had no way to be able to contact them. Um, we uh, kind of lost uh, touch with each other. So, um, yeah. CS all the way. <laughs> In order to get myself back on my feet. Now I'm a little bit more self-sufficient. Um, it's still very slow, so I might see us um, sometimes uh, if I'm like, hey, you know, if I do this and I'll be able to get this weapon that I really need. Like, in order to get this Wind Pixie, I ended up having to do that. But now that I have this Wind Pixie, um, I'm able to farm in here. And, I mean, when I started in here, I had, like, what, 10 million rupees? I now have, like, 71 million in rupees. Um... 
And I used my scroll of refresh right at like the beginning of the stream. Um, so now when I came in here, I still have like 18 minutes left. I probably haven't even been farming for maybe like 10 minutes now. Um, 10, 15. I haven't really been entirely timing it. And I already have a good bit of uh, gold dropping, rupees dropping. So I'm able to at least be in a position now where I'm able to uh, make some good money in game by grinding. And um, it's a slow process, but you know, at least it's something better than what I was doing before with farming the non-dura in uh, Kaya Lake, which um, doesn't require you to be as strong or as high level to be able to do it. So it's a good way for some lower levels and people that don't have as um, good equipments and pets and stuff to be able to do it um, to make a little bit of money. And then when you do have good pets, you can go in there and your kill speed is so good that you can make more money. But the amount that the non-dura gear drops for you to be sell it doesn't really justify doing that over farming in Rota if you have the ability to with a good kill speed. But right now I'm kind of just focusing on my character. I'm trying to, um, I've been improving myself. Um, I've been learning more about the changes, learning more about the class that I play, um, learning more about the new pets, learning about what it is that I need to be doing, um, and also getting myself there um, before I really worry about trying to get more online friends and join a guild and do all that. Now in, uh, in goal, um, I would like to, of course, obviously min max all my stats, have like the best of the best armor, and stuff for my pets and for myself um, and I'd like to join a higher level guild um, there are some actually really big and active guilds on this server a lot of them are really small but there are some like really big ones and they're the ones that constantly do the like uh, the citadel raid and that actually do like the dungeon raids and stuff like that so I would definitely like to join one of those and do the raids um, back when I used to play I actually was in one of the bigger guilds and did um, Citadel once and it was pretty fun um, but I know that in my current state um, I need to get to be a little bit better um, before I'm able to really start worrying about that I need to get better equipment um, for my pets and for myself so that I'll actually be able to hold my own when doing that higher level stuff so that's why I am currently guiltless by the way um, as I said earlier Oh yeah, this is now at like 345 durability out of 825. It's a good idea to stay on top of, um, honestly, I would say every like few minutes that you're farming in a dungeon, you should probably go ahead and be checking your equipment just to make sure that you don't run out of dura um, because you do not want your stuff to break on you. Now, to be fair, the weapon that I have on my Wind Pixie right now, um, it's, it's an okay weapon. It's not really great. I kind of just bought it just so that it would have something, which is better than nothing but um, it doesn't have perfect stats on it, so um, I am trying to save up and get an actual um, weapon that is like really good for it, but in the meantime, it's going to be a setback if any of my stuff breaks, so just need to make sure that I'm opening um, up that menu. I'm actively repairing my durability um, while I'm out farming. But yeah, honestly, um, I got this Wind Pixie yesterday. I've been playing with it for, uh, I played with it like all last night. Um, it's just, I am still in shock and awe on like how freaking amazing um, that Wind Pixie actually is. Um, it is easily um, the most popular of the newest pets in the game. Everyone and <laughs> their dog wants a Wind Pixie and has a Wind Pixie, and it is very easy to be able to tell why. Now, I am playing Master Breeder. It's not really, again, considered to be the meta choice for you to use a Wind Pixie on Master Breeder. Um, most people who are going to be using Wind Pixie are going to be playing the pet class called Overlord. It's the uh, Sura pet class. And um, whereas Master Breeder passively increases the intelligence, strength, and critical power of um, their pets and also has the um, passive that allows your first pet to give extra strength and intelligence to your secondary pet or well to give yeah based on its mp and hp um overlords can passively increase the max mp and max hp of their pets um they have a few other buffs and stuff like that um 
that are really good for the Wind Pixie. So uh, for an Overlord, they would actually just run a dual Wind Pixie with no tank, and their kill speed is just so incredibly fast that it's just absolute insanity. But um, I don't know. I was debating on making an Overlord just so I could use the dual Wind Pixie, but um, I actually rather like how it works on the Master Breeder. Um, my Ethereal Pixie effectively supercharges my Wind Pixie to make the Wind Pixie even stronger. And honestly, I think that it makes the Wind Pixie probably stronger than it would be on Overlord. But if I ran dual Wind Pixie, then I would have to get rid of my Ethereal Pixie. And my Ethereal Pixie is what supercharges my Wind Pixie to make it so good. So I would actually end up nerfing myself. So here we are. <laughs> Also, um, there is a um, attack speed cap in the game where if you go over it, like it doesn't even uh, like help you anymore. There's only so much attack speed you can get. My uh, Wind Pixie isn't quite there yet. My Wind Pixie has probably like 800 something attack speed if I actually uh, did attack speed 844. Um, now, what's interesting is even though it is a... Uh, a ranged creature it actually uses a mace um, which gives strength and intelligence and a mace is a melee weapon so it's actually considered a melee pet even though it attacks from a range and for melee the attack speed cap is like 1060 or 1080 attack speed and it's currently at like 844 so i'm approaching that uh, attack speed cap um i'm not quite there yet i could get some more attack speed on my Wind Pixie, but not much. But Wind Pixies are uh, easily able to hit and go over that attack speed cap um, compared to other pets, which makes them have some of the best DPS in the game is because they can actually hit that cap, whereas other pets will never get close enough to doing it. I imagine that a Death Gladiator um, probably could hit that attack speed cap too, which that is a uh, tier above the Wind Pixie, um, right along with Hector. Both of them are like T7 pets, and they're like the only T7 pets in the game. And Death Gladiator is a melee pet that focuses on attack speed and evasion. And I imagine that one can probably hit two, but those are like the only two pets I know of that are like guaranteed to get the, uh, basically, the speed cap. And what's funny is I don't even have that many, I don't even really have any attack speed modifiers on my pet. It just gets a passive where if you put a mace on it, it gets a bunch of passive attack speed. But I haven't even used like any attack speed soul stones, and I don't have any like extra agility on there on like my equipments and stuff like that to make it attack faster. That's pretty much just as natural with its own passive. Um, so if I were to bother to switch out some of my gears to give it a little bit more agility, I could easily have it hit the uh, attack speed cap. Oh yeah. And as I've been talking randomly, I'm already at like 120 million rupees. Um, that's just flat out without even having to sell any items or sell my lack for rupees or anything like that. So again, for just flat out like rupees that you're going to find, um, this is definitely one of the better places to uh, be farming. Now, of course, there's a lot of dungeons and places that I actually can't go because I'm not high enough level. Like... Um, Oh man, I'm trying to think of the word for it. The Volcanus Dungeon that got reworked a couple of years ago, so it's now a like level 200 plus dungeon, where it has its own deco set that gives you some of the best uh, stats in the game. And I need to work on getting to level 200, um, and also improving the gear that I have and my pets have, so I'll be able to go in there and do that, so that I can uh, find the stuff and craft everything I need to make those deco gears which means that um, this Rudolph set is going to be going bye-bye at some point, but no point in the near future. Um, that's, uh, it takes a long time to get that done. But that'll make me a lot stronger. Then there's also this new place called Sky Fortress, which is like level 210, level 220, something like that, um, where there's a whole bunch of bosses everywhere, and that's a huge PK fest. Um, people are constantly killing each other for the right to be able to kill the bosses that are in there. So you need to make sure that you are all geared up before you go in there because it's going to be just PK fest. Um, Master Breeder isn't really good at uh, PvP. Um, we have some of the low, we have like really low defense, so we get killed pretty damn fast. So I'll need to make sure that 
I uh, make sure I'm increasing my defenses as best as I can with the best armors that I can. By that point, though, I'll need to find a guild, have guild mates, and have people that I can go out and party with, so I'm not just trying to solo. Um, that would not work out very well. How much do you spend rupee to get gear in Pixie, not the cash shop or coins? Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, so this Pixie is S5, level 201. Um, I think it was around 249 um, billion, um, around around 249, 250 billion um, for this particular pixie. Some people will sell S5s for upwards of like 270. Um, so I didn't really get the worst price on it, considering it was level 200, and I could have easily purchased a level 190 pixie for more. I just found someone who, I guess, just wanted to quick sell it for about 20 bill less than it was actually worth um the ethereal pixie is way 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 cheaper um i bought this s5 for about what 90 bill but honestly even 90 bill is kind of overpriced um i'm thinking that they're only going for around like 70 to 80 bill at this point um as they become less desirable to people um because most people just want hector and the wind pixie um, because most people are playing Overlord or a class that can utilize those two pets better. Um, and the gears, that really just depends. Um, for instance, I bought a near-perfect... Um, honestly, I can't really show you my gears and stuff while I am trying to kill these monsters. So give me a moment here and I will... Um, get into a safer spot to be able to AFK for a moment while I show you this stuff. And I have about six minutes left on my gear. Seven minutes left on my gear. Is anything still chasing me? Yeah, okay. Cool. So, I bought a near-perfect staff for my Ethereal Pixie. Um, now, near-perfect um, is going to go based on the random effects. The effect, the stats in purple. Basically, there's certain stats that you're guaranteed to get, and there's certain minimums and maximums you can get. So I made sure to get one that had the max intelligence, which was 48%. I mean, eight. I'm sorry, 84 flat intelligence. The MP recovery, 48%. Magic attack um, can go up to 1300. Mine is at like 1203. Um, magical pierce can go up to like 440, and I got one at 436. And critical power can go up to 40%. I got one that was 39.6. And then you can either get max HP upwards of 1,500 or max MP upwards of 900. I couldn't find one that had the max MP on it that held all the other stats. Um, although I would have preferred MP over HP, they both help me because they both give bonus stats to my pets. Um, I bought this staff for about 250 bill. It's a plus 23 out of a plus 25. It's only level 10 out of level 40. Um... <clears throat> these uh, Yeshiva's belts increase all of my Pixies' uh, active stats by one. Um, these are just level one, freshly made. These go for about 20 to 30 billion a piece. Um, this ring has a lot of critical power, has evasion, has maximum int on it. The int plus 50. Critical power is like 18 to 25. I bought this for like 5 or 6 billion. Um, if it had maximum critical power on it it probably would have gone for like 10 to 12 billion because people tend to put more focus on critical power over like anything else in the game these basic new sea light armors i probably paid one to two bill each for uh these shields again one to two bill each they're pretty good um they're pretty nice but they're not absolutely perfect so i plan on um going in and uh, like piece by piece getting the best possible armor, the best possible mage shield, the best possible. I actually need to buy a ring for my Ethereal Pixie I was looking the other day and I couldn't find one that I really wanted for it. So I said I would just find one another time, keep saving up. Um, but yeah, you are looking at spending hundreds of billions, upwards of a trillion for like perfect gears for like any one pet. If you are trying to get the best possible stats and you will not accept anything less than the best. If you're willing to accept a little less than the best, hundreds of billions, not quite a billion. <clears throat> I have had people messaging me, apparently. 
while I have been uh, farming and have not been seeing my messages. Um, I have well, less than four minutes until I need to refresh these again. Um, now, my gears, on the other hand, um, if we're going to look at them, um, let's see. Helmets, new sea lights, this thing easily could sell for about 80 bill. I need to get it to plus 24, so I need to have another plus 22 defense item to sacrifice to make it plus 23, and then another 23 defense item to make it plus 24. That would easily go for a few hundred billion at the least, maybe 300, 350. Um, the armor, I'm going to need to get up to, again, about like plus 25 for all of my main armor um, would be good, except for the gloves. The gloves give you extra attack speed, but I don't really even attack as a master breeder. I just let my pets attack, so that doesn't really have to be any better. Um, my armor is only three slots for soul stones. I need to get one that's four slots. That'll run me a little bit more. My gloves are two slot. I need one that's three slots. My boots are three slot, and these things are plus 25. These cost me um, ultimately about a, what a good 300 to 400 bill because I made them myself. Um, I bought some other ones off of other people that were like plus 21, plus 22, and I got them to plus 25. Um, that took a while. This uh, belt cost me about like. I think I bought this one for like 130, 150 bill, something like that, but I need to get it to plus 25 also, so I need another plus 23 to make a 24, plus 24 to make a plus 25. Um, I need to redo my belt. Um, I have the boss cards I need, but um, I need to redo the boss pets that I have, so... Fun stuff. Is the Wind Pixie Crystal Golem do a little bit better than the EPCG? Starting to see more of that. Um, I know a person using that. Let's see. Okay, 49 seconds till all my buffs run out. I'm going to go ahead and use my scroll of refresh on myself and my pets. Um, I have to wait for the scroll to go down cooldown to come up. Um, by the way, let's answer your question earlier. Um, I got 317 essences of power, 4,517 concentrated power, so that's about 4,800. Um, so that's about 480 extreme powers that I've gotten from my farming. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah, I'll help you. Okay, let's see. Kind of funny. Everyone says Overlord is stronger, but mine couldn't solo assist four. Yeah, Overlord is like the most common pet class. Okay, this person wants me to help them kill some high level shit. We're going to go do that and y'all will get to see a fun thing you get to look forward to doing when uh, you get high enough level. Should I change my stones on CG to strength from crit? Um, crit is good. Here. I have max um, black anyway. So yeah. Oh yeah. My hidden village pass right now. Let's do another one. 
because I'm using one day passes, so when they time out, I just use another one day pass. Yeah, uh, make a party and invite. Okay, so I didn't expect to show this to y'all in this um, stream, but once you become your master class, you have to go through a bunch of trials in order to earn what are called your talent points, which I've gone over. Um, trade like for rupees. Yeah, trade all of them. Your talent points are what you use to buy in this skill tree, and you have to buy in this skill tree in order to unlock the bottom skill trees. And the talent points come from quests that are very, very, very hard that mostly you will not be able to do by yourself when you need to do them. So you get higher level players to help you out or you use like a really high level pet from your main to do it for you. So now this person needs us to go, I think it's the coast from Rondo. Yep, I remembered correctly. So one of the things that you have to do, one of the quests involves basically it's going to spawn monsters that are way higher level than you, that are like bosses, like harder than dungeon bosses, and you have to kill them. And good luck doing that. So I am going to be doing that for this person. Because honestly, I just like to help people out. I think it's more fun to go and help people out than always playing solo and farming and accomplishing just money. Um, I don't think they'll even drop any loot, but turn off my loot pet just in case. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh all of their stuff, including giving them this and this and this. And um, I actually haven't done this quest in like forever. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I just dropped it like no one's business. They have to go turn in the quest and get another one for an even stronger monster now before we can summon anything else. Trying to tell them to add this other person to party so um, I can just kill everything and make it easier for everyone. Good. Now I'm killing monsters for both of them. This makes this easier instead of trying to figure out, oh hey, whose monster do I need to kill? Okay, some of the monsters and I will destroy them and they will get their credit and it will just, uh, yeah, it'll be good. How many people are we inviting to this? <laughs> oh, really? Um, I, I, I don't know how to handle that.
I mean, they didn't really need me for anything. Um, but if I can't kill the boss for them and they get credit, they have to kill it themselves. Um, not much I can really do to help on that one. I, I like I one shot these things, so <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not attacking them. I one shot them, so um, I don't know how to help you. I'll give you a buff. I'll make your pet stronger. <laughs> I'll help you that way. But like, um, if I go attack it, I'm gonna just murder it. So. Yeah, um, feels kind of bad. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people here right now trying to do these quests. Like, everyone at the same time. I'll heal you up. I can heal you that way. There, did you get it? Yeah, um, I can't really be of much use. I was helping this person with some quests the other day. Um, don't hit by pit. Oh, by pet. I mean, yeah, I'm not using my pets to attack, but like, I don't deal any damage myself. Um, let's see. Let's see how this works. I'm gonna show y'all something stupid. Um, If he summons, or his king. Court is king, and I'm gonna just start attacking it. Okay, I got it kind of low. There we go, I guess that kind of helped. So by just using not my pets, um, I can help kill this stuff, but not one-shot it, so yeah. Did 
I die, 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 Look how stupid fast I'm attacking, by the way. Like, some kind of, like, anime <laughs> character. Okay, I'm gonna let the rest of that go to them now. So, you know what? I can help. I feel better. Okay, do we need more monsters? Was that it? them finish up the damage because I don't want to take it from them. I love how crazy that looks when I'm attacking. Run, 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 run! I don't think I killed it. Yeah, I don't think I killed it. giant harpy but not for long oh, I should probably check my own dura since I've actually been running down the dura of anything I don't even think I have Four durability total between three items. Okay. And that's funny, it was attacking me the entire time and I was just avoiding everything. Oh yeah, and with this one you have to keep running back to the NPC, turning in the quest, and get the next quest so that you can summon the next monster. You have to do it, like, numerous times. If I remember correctly, you have to kill, like, one or two monsters of every tier. So, like, the Pantera earlier was, like, tier one. The Harpy was, like, tier three. So I think we're going to have to go through a few more of these.
Okay, that's a null, that's a tier 4 pet. That's cute. I'm just dodging its attacks. <laughs> Not a single care given. So there should only be like upwards of two more. Oh, they logged out. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they DC'd. I'll wait and see if they come back here in just a minute, and if not, then I'm gone. No, maybe it's just me, but honestly, I like having the two pixies following more than I like having the pixie and the crystal golem. I don't know why, I just like the visual of the two pixies more. The pink and the yellow, I think, go, go, go great together. On top of the fact that I honestly think that the wind pixie is a better pet on top of it. Yeah, I know, I know that issue. The internet cuts out, no problem at all. <laughs> oh yeah, my attack's not working. There we go. And thankfully, since I did all the damage, it's aggroing me, so I don't have to worry about healing their pets. That was a T5 pet, that was the genie. The genie actually used to be a really good pet. I mean, it still is. It just gets outclassed by the new pets. Two cam. Oh yeah, you have to go to another uh, summoning altar. I think this one summons like two monsters at the same time or something like that. Okay. 
I'm ready. I know sometimes I think on these there's like a cooldown between the time that you use like one summoning and another. Killing so fast that you actually have to wait for the cooldown to go off. There we go. So right now I'm killing this Nightmare King. Well, Nightmare is a tier 3 pet, actually. And the Orc is a T2 pet, so we have to work our way back up. I'm still infinitely amused by, like, this attack speed that's, like, not even humanly possible. And I'll start attacking the Orc King and get it down for them. Okay, now I cannot do last hit on these, otherwise they won't get credit, so I have to stop attacking and let them... Well, I'm just standing here tanking it because it can't even hurt me. Now they have to go turn in their quest, get the next quest, come back. Meanwhile, I just stand in this epic pose for, like, no reason with this, like, really threatening, like, evil Rudolph face. Which I'm trying to zoom out and show it. But yeah. Those are what the... Actually, I like how the pixies look up, like, up close. Like, they look kind of like this, like, really... It's just interesting. Like, you'd think, like, it looks pink, but then, like, you zoom all the way in, and it's just white, and, um, oh, there's a third altar we go to. Like, when you, um, tame, like, dungeon monsters, like, a uh, in the soul pet system, um, like, they'll look kind of, like, white and, like, statuish and inhuman and stuff like that. It's kind of, like, what that reminds me of. Come on, let's go. They, oh, my game was lagging like all oh, heck. <laughs> it showed they were still there when they actually weren't. I need to go... How the heck do I get there? This way. Yep, third altar. What is with these aggros? Right now we're killing the octopus queen. Yeah, this one has like numerous bosses at the same time, so when you're low level, if you're trying to do this yourself, you are gonna die. They make these quests like needlessly hard for people of that level but for me since i'm already like way past this and i don't even need it anymore i'm just like this is nothing oh man i nearly got stuck having to keep uh, attacking that stupid kraken like i was trying to move and it was not happening Gonna let them kill that thing before I try and attack anything else, just to make sure. 
Skeleton King, you're the next to die. You're the next on my list. Die, 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 die. With inhuman attack speed. Die, 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 die. And that stone golem, they... <laughs> Too bad these pets never get that big when you actually own them. Stolen Golem is a tank that um, specializes in healing. It's a T4 pet that was added many, many years ago, and it was like the biggest thing when it came out. Everyone had to have it. It was the best tank in the game at that time. And people have always loved healing pets. Now let me just steal the aggro off you, because it's going to murder your pets. Okay, I'll leave him with that much health to deal with. Meanwhile... I'm gonna show y'all my slash dance. Take that, Fortnite. Ooh, he actually managed to do a little bit of damage to me. Oh, that's a surprise. Your aggro's all over this area and this person's AFK, unless they're like a higher level. Maybe they are. I don't know. You can't see a person's level just by clicking on them anymore. Like you could back like a decade ago. Here they come again. Do no, I actually forgot that there were like four. Are there five altars? How many of these stupid things are there? I don't know. <coughs> five. Let's do it. The white dragon. Back in the day, this was the pet to have. It was the best pet in the game for the longest time. Okay, I don't know what's going on. But, like, my character has stopped attacking. There we go. There are literally so many monsters here. <laughs> you have the Pantera King, the Salamander, you have the freaking White Dragon, you have the Ifri, you have the... Yeah, literally like five monsters at the same time that you gotta kill. speed so incredibly slow. Ah, uh, that's funny. Oh, they don't even have their uh, golem out anymore? Did something happen, or is it just not show on the thing? I don't know. Okay, they've nearly killed the dragon. That'll be one down. Well, that's the dragon down. Kill this Pantera.
one of the weaker ones, so just get it out of the way quicker. Same thing with this salamander, let's just get it out of the way so it's off the screen. Run, run, run. Golem King, you are next. Let's try you to animate that. Okay. Ifrit is like the genie, but the genie is like um, physical damage, and the Ifrit is magical utility. I'll probably be using my potions to run faster. He's falling after them. <gasps> oh, maybe they meant to say done. Okay, um... We Gucci. You know, like before they went to jail? Gucci, we good? Okay, very good. Mission is finished. Hey, okay, well, I'm going to go back to the Hidden Village now that I have helped them do their quest. And let's see. Um, I have some lack I could trade in. Did I get a beginner's light? I don't know. That is a loot pig. Mm. The flower for a tail. Uh, sure. What's up? By the way, I want to buy more scrolls. It's always a good idea to keep like four or five on you of each at a time. Scroll of pet power, I'm gonna buy five. And scroll of refresh, I'm gonna go ahead and buy four. 
That way I have an even five of each. 162 million. What is the distribution of the talent points? Oh, fuck. Um, you are MB, correct? I think they were a master breeder. Honestly, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> kind of like that, unless I'm like actively trying to focus on something, I'm not gonna think about it. Summon Mastery, two crit. Three. Law of Exchange. Yes, they have five points. So there are 10 TP total. I use two summon mastery, two critical resonance, two grim desire. One law of exchange, and I have one point in pedal. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Second level of pedal wouldn't be bad. So you have five. Let's go in the flea market. <sighs> Again, when I'm idling and I don't have much else I'm doing, I like to be in the flea market. Just in case any new shops have popped up. Or any new items were put in the shops. If stuff sells, maybe they put something else. Right now I am on the hunt for a specific loot pet that I want. Which is a tiny little white horse. Once I have that, I will show y'all about <laughs> Deco Pet Evolution. Now typically when I have my buffs on a timer, I'll log into like an alt to go into the uh, 
flea market so that I'm not um, wasting my time on my buffs, but I don't really care right now because, again, I make so much money from farming for even just a few minutes in Rota, and I have five refresh scrolls of each. It doesn't make a difference to me. <sighs> okay, well, most of these stores are stores that have already been here for like a while. Not really seeing anything particularly new. So I think I should get back to my farming. Though actually I forgot, I was getting messages earlier on Discord. Okay. <clears throat> Let me check durability of my pet's equipment. Let's make sure that they are at max. Let's check my own durability. Um, again, probably shouldn't really have a good little bit of durability ahead of your sword. I am at 70% weight though, so it might be a good idea to go ahead and go donate some stuff to the altar, get it out of my inventory. Come on. I click on the thing correct for it to actually function. And again, the altar isn't like every town. I just like doing it in Horizon because it's literally right here after you get out of the teleporter. It's just convenient. <laughs> Back where this video started. Okay. Also, all these soul stones are kind of worthless to me because the cash shop ones are so much better. And even if you don't cash shop yourself, you can just buy them off other people who've bought them during the sales in the cash shop. So I find all the ones that you find drop off the ground are just really eh, not that great. So I have no problem not saving those for any particular reason. Okay. Now I think it is about time that we go back to our farming spot and we try to make some more money. I had 160 million earlier, I bought the scrolls, I'm now down to 6 million, and I am trying to save up money. So, remains of ancients, yep. Get rid of this buff otherwise. So anytime you teleport it gives you the aura of protection, you cannot attack or be attacked while it's in effect. So, like, no one can PK you, which is nice, but you also can't take these portals. <laughs> Otherwise, you could just run in here with that buff on, and it would be nice. But no. Now, we're running back to my favorite farming spot, and we're going to hope that it is already open and not taken. I don't know. I don't like to be an a-hole. I don't like to, like, be the person that goes in and uh, PKs them just so I can have a spot. <laughs> like, oh, you're in my spot. I'm going to PK you so I can farm here now. Other people will do that, but I don't know. I do enjoy PK on like occasion. By the way, I should probably have my loot pet turned on. I'm not going to pass down free loot that I'm running by because other people couldn't be bothered to pick up their stuff. That is free money laying on the ground. I am cheap like that. I can save up enough money, I can get better gears for my pets so that they will be even better. Um, so that I can go to even higher level areas. There's another dungeon after this called Devildom that has like six stages and I can easily solo stage one and two with good kill speed, stage three with like okay kill speed, and like stage four I can't do because I just don't have the kill speed for it. 
So I really need to get my Wind Pixie. It's my main goal. I need to get my Wind Pixie to have even more damage, even more crit, more attack speed. Um, so that I'll be able to go in and kill the monsters in all those other areas. So that I can make even more money from my farming. Most people like to farm for like an hour or two hours at a time. But <laughs> my attention span, I just I like to do it for like 20-30 minutes. Every now and then I'll farm for like an hour, but I'll get bored. That's another good farming spot. Um, this like entire room has like a bunch of monsters and witches, but they're lower level. They're like level like 180 to like level 185, and I'm farming level 190 spot. The higher the level of the dungeon monsters you're killing, not only the better drops you're gonna get, the more drops you're gonna get. So that is why that is not good enough for me. <laughs> Thankfully, no one's here. Again, I don't like having to compete for my farm, for my farming spot. Yeah, I should probably go ahead and put these two buffs back on my pets. Increases their defense so they take less damage and increases the uh, overall damage output they do so they kill stuff even faster. Oh hey, there's the Mystic Koala. You know what? I hadn't planned on... Uh, they can have the Koala, I don't really care. Okay, so since y'all saw it, I'm going to explain it to you. Basically, each of the dungeons, there's a koala that will spawn like once every 10 minutes after it's been killed, and it will spawn somewhere randomly in the dungeon. There's no set spawn point. It'll just be somewhere that it spawns, anywhere in the dungeon. And if you kill it, it drops this portal, which stays active for a few minutes. You can take this portal to go to a hardcore dungeon, uh, a hardcore version of the dungeon. So it's the same dungeon. You'll be put at the entrance, and it'll be darker, it'll be slightly different colored, the mobs will um, move differently, and they will all have way higher defenses, way higher health, way higher um, attack, like it's, a, it's called hardcore for a reason. They also give way better drops. Now, um, people will come through these dungeons just to try and find the hardcore dungeon, because if you can farm the hardcore version of the dungeon, you're going to be making a lot more money, you're going to be getting a lot more experience, leveling up faster, it's better for you. Now, with the Crystal Golem, I tried to do the hardcore, and it just, it did not work out at all. I had no kill speed. With the Wind Pixie, I can eff almost effectively do the entrance of the dungeon. I can farm that little area. Unfortunately, it is a highly contested area, so you're always going to have a bunch of PKers in there killing you to try and take the spot. Um, so it's really hardly worth it, but even then my kill speed with my Wind Pixie isn't good enough for me to justify trying to do the hardcore version over just staying in here where I have an amazing kill speed and can just get drop after drop after drop like crazy. So once my, um, Pixie gets a little bit better, I get better equipment for it and I get better kill speed, um, I will start doing the, uh, hardcore, um, version of Rota. It just happened to uh, spawn in the room that I like to farm in. Um, I have actively searched for that thing before, and it's a pain because this dungeon um, is kind of big. It's not the biggest, but it's definitely not on the smaller end. Also, it is one of the slightly bigger dungeons. Um, and there's like a path in the middle that's like rocked off by like mountains. So like you have to go that middle path, and it doesn't access any other wa any other place. Um, so you have to do a lot of backtracking if you're trying to go through the entirety of the dungeon to find that koala. And because the uh, portal only stays around for so long, um, I don't even know exactly how long, but it's generally um, only a handful of minutes. If someone else kills it on the other side of the dungeon, by the time you get to where it was, it can already be gone, then you have to wait 10 minutes for it to respawn. Here, I'm just trying to even catch up with my collects. I don't want them to stay on the ground. 
They'll stay for a little bit, but after a while they'll despawn. It takes a while though. It's like once you kill something, um, if you're the one that last hits it, then you're the only one that can collect it unless you are in a party with the person who last hit it. Um, and it stays on the ground and it's either 5 or 10 minutes after um, it becomes available for anyone to be able to uh, collect and then after maybe like 20-30 minutes or something it just despawns. So a lot of people who are farming at higher level will like clear a room like this like multiple times over and then just start collecting everything at once. Um, I do that too but just in case people come in here and want to try and contest it and steal my stuff and PK me I like to also try and keep up with uh, collecting my stuff while I'm doing stuff but it can kind of slow you down. Oh, and also, uh, just to note, that Mystic Koala, um, it'll be like almost one shot by anything. It has like no health intentionally, and it also drops nothing and gives like almost no EXP. It, it only serves is to open up a portal. It doesn't actually give you anything for killing it, other than the ability to go into the Hardcore Dungeon. Though, um, there are some quest lines where in the dungeon, um, if you speak to the person in the NPC inside of the dungeon, they might give you a quest to kill the Koala. To open up the portal, in which case you, that quest will give you some extra experience and gold. Probably some Luna chips as a quest, as a quest reward. But it's not like you're going to go farming at like a dungeon boss or something to try and get some really good drops or anything. about a little over five minutes before. <laughs> Believe me, um, you always want to keep track of um, the timer on your buffs and also on your durability. Those are two of the most important numbers for you to know at any given time. Yeah, so earlier I had 160 million and I bought the scrolls so that means by the time that I I mean really I could use one scroll and then by the time I run out of that scroll I need to have more than 160 million I'm already at like 41 get money pretty quick in here I will say that portals lasting a lot longer than I remember it might have adjusted it so that it lasts longer because it used to only be a very short time You go in there, you kill it, and then people keep finding your portal and coming in and then stealing your farm, and then you're having to compete with them to see who has the right to kill the farm. <laughs> That's why they put a respawn timer on there. funny though for this one more often than not I see it spawn um, near the entrance of the dungeon like in that first room where there's like a bunch of those crystal spiders and the skeletons all the time but I would I would definitely say a good portion of the time that I see that koala it's at the entrance I stand in one spot and let them go around the room and kill everything and it's kind of quicker that way. And I can just go around and collect everything when I'm ready. 
So I have to make sure that I'm killing everything fast enough that monsters don't spawn next to me and start killing me while my pets are killing stuff on the other half of the room. Because that will happen. And again, I am not very tanky. So yeah, there's items everywhere and I want to start collecting them. This one right now is killing me. Okay. A little over a minute. Should be about the same on my pet about four minutes. Go ahead and refresh all my buffs. And when it comes up, I'll refresh my pet buffs. I don't know. I like to keep them at about the same time. I know that I have a few extra minutes, and it's a waste. But like, it just it bothers me if they're not almost at the same time. So now, when mine are almost done, theirs will be almost done instead of having like an extra minute or two left over. Now, in order to make the money back that I wasted, as long as I have over 160 million um, by the time that this next set of refresh is over, so another hour, then I'll have made my money back. But I bought these file these scrolls, which if I actually stay here farming for an hour, I'll have plenty more than that. The problem is if I actually do it, I'll probably get bored and want to go do something else. Sometimes I'll get bored and I'll just sit in town and be like, hey, anyone, you know, um, I'll help you with your quest. Tell me what you need. Oh, there's bots out there killing the monster you need for your quest. I'll go kill those bots for you or I'll go kill this monster for you. Get tired of farming and want to do something. Other than that, I just like to help people. Um, I know throughout the years I relied on a lot of people to help me kill stuff that I couldn't kill to help me complete quests to uh, answer questions, so I like to try and help other people when I can. They're grouping up on me, but I'm not even bothering to use my AoE, but my Pixie just used one of its uh, AoE skills, a Wind Pixie.
also one good thing about keeping the Ethereal Pixies, you have the heals. Healed myself back up to max when I took damage. Now if I really wanted to, what I would do is collect all the monsters in the room just like this. And there we go. Let's kill them all at once. to get as many monsters in on this action as possible to make it the most worth it. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Okay, so um, I got a little bit too cocky and before my Pixies AoE was able to go off and kill everything, I died. That means that I paid for. Now, I have the Godmother that I can spawn here and I can get all the experience that I lost back and on top of that I can get my buffs back. When I do this I'm going to be surrounded by monsters, my pets will be desummoned, I'm going to need to go back to the uh, hidden village before I die. But I mean most of that money back anyway and I can always go back. Plus I have the lack I need to go sell. like 128 mil <laughs> from like nothing I got to like 128 mil I saw like 51 minutes on all my buffs I need to summon my pets and then I'm gonna need to use another scroll to put the buffs back on them because their buffs are gonna be gone okay well honestly I'm thinking about taking a break from this anyway Especially since that just happened, kind of killed that whole let's farm vibe. Um, oh yeah, you can see there's a player disguised as a pixie right there. Not pixie, a uh, yeti. Is this that loot pet? Oh, that's the uh, primal scream loot pet. Anyways, well, it has been fun. Um, I wanted to <laughs> go over um, a few things with y'all, showed y'all, talked to y'all about like the PvP system on a PK server and like donating to Altar of the Goddess and showed y'all me running my new Pixie instead of my Golem um, and showed y'all a little bit of farming with that to uh, show you um, how good the kill speed is on it. So I um, accomplished everything I really actually wanted to on here. Um, I'll have to think of what else I'm going to do for my next video. I know I like to keep a lot of my stuff for like lower level play. I mean, I wanted to keep a lot of my stuff for lower level play, give like a guide to, you know, beginners, people want to join the game. But I also like to show farming at like higher level. I showed y'all doing the parallel world. I showed y'all when I was doing the um, jewel farming, which I'm no longer doing. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's not as profitable as being able to farm Roto, which back when I was doing it, I didn't have the ability to do what I do now which is why I had to use that as a way to make some money. Um, but as always, this video will be uploaded to YouTube. It only stays on Twitch for about like 14 days before it gets deleted. I think y'all have seen like mostly all the videos on my channel have been deleted now. I think there's maybe only like one, maybe two left. Um, but the videos will never get deleted off of YouTube. Um, if y'all go there, um, y'all can comment on them. If y'all have any questions, comments, anything, tell me what y'all want to see. Um, what y'all like, what y'all don't like. 
and uh, we will go from there. But that is all for today's video. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting um, live. Um, I had fun. I hope you all did. <laughs> the character select screen.